No problem. No problem. Good evening, everybody. It's great to be here. I would like to acknowledge uh, the government of Kosovo leaders, members of the diplomatic community, members of the AMCHAM Board of Governors, its executive director, its members, and our guests. Thank you all uh, for being here tonight and taking some time to spend with me. I appreciate it. I uh, know the embassy is strongly supportive of the mission of the AMCHAM in Kosovo. And I'd like to assure you that our tradition of close cooperation will continue under my leadership. We are proud of the work that you do. Everything from policy analysis and advocacy to alternative dispute resolution and promoting corporate social responsibility. AmCham is a leading voice on issues that matter to the business community. You have accomplished a lot over the last 11 years. But I'm going to give you no time to rest on your laurels. We're going to be expecting more. As a new arrival to Kosovo, I'm impressed with the progress the country has made in such a short period of time since independence. Yet, Kosovo still struggles to attract needed foreign investment and to foster sustainable economic growth, as you mentioned. Its unemployment rate, especially among its youth, is far too high, and corruption continues to adversely affect Kosovo's development. The next couple of years are going to be crucial for the country. We need you, the business community, to really step up and continue fighting for the economic future of this country. We don't have much time to waste. The immigration crisis last winter signaled to me loud and clear for many of Kosovo's youth, its most precious resource may be beginning to lose faith in their future in Kosovo. As I previously stated, I believe there are three key areas that we, all of us, urgently need to address. Rule of law, regional security, and economic development. I have told my government and your government that these are my priorities during my time here. Achieving substantial progress on all of these issues is essential for Kosovo to realize its destiny to become a part of all the key European democratic, economic, and security institutions. And until Kosovo has joined these clubs, our work, my work to help achieve a Europe whole, free, and at peace will not be done. Now, I'd like to share with you a few suggestions for how you might join me and others in Kosovo in these efforts. First and foremost, we need to continue to get more serious about corruption. The cause of corruption to a society go far beyond the price of a bribe. Corruption sours the investment climate and costs Kosovo the jobs it needs to help keep young people here to build their country's future. In 2013, the World Bank Worldwide Governance Indicators on Control, control of Corruption ranked Kosovo in the bottom third of the world. Those of us who care about this country and its youth cannot allow this trend to continue. The U.S. Embassy has been helping to train police, prosecutors, and judges. In fact, the embassy invested about $15 million last year to strengthen Kosovo's judiciary and enhance the rule of law. Businesses, that's you, big and small, need to take a stand too. It doesn't matter if you're bidding on a tender, paying your taxes, or just going about your work. Don't let corruption creep into your business. Don't let yourself be subject to those who want to use their public powers for private gain. If you see evidence of corruption, fight it, resist it, and report it. Do your part to hold fellow businesses, the government, and other institutions accountable. Tackling corruption is necessary, but not sufficient, to promote economic development here. 
Secondly, uh, we all, uh, not sufficient to work here, uh, the economic development fields, we all have a role to play. The embassy is committed uh, to supporting sustainable private sector-led economic growth for the benefit of all the people of Kosovo. The good news is that Kosovo moved from 81 to 75 in the World Bank's ease of doing business indicators this year. This is progress, but it is also evidence that there is further we have to go. The business community and the government of Kosovo need to closely collaborate in enacting policies that spur economic development and address Kosovo's competitiveness in the global marketplace. The business community's input on recent tax changes was a good first step. And Kosovo's economy is in fact growing. That is not happening as fast as many of us would like, but things are moving forward. We need each of you to help keep things on track. We will continue to look to MCHA to take the leading role in promoting regional cooperation. And likewise, we will continue to look to the business community to focus on increasing regional trade and tackling market barriers. Third, Kosovo's economy will not pick up steam until there is an increase in investment. How do you create the right environment to spur investment? Well, investors, whether foreign or domestic, typically want things like a low level of corruption, an efficient court system to resolve disputes, and a positive legal and economic climate. They also want political stability. And here is where I start to deal with the elephant in the room. It's over there. <laughs> because right now, all around the world, people are seeing, including potential investors, television pictures of Kosovo. And what they are seeing does not look like political stability. In fact, it looks like the opposite. To those individuals who would bring weapons into the Kosovo Assembly and use them against members of Parliament, I can only ask, what are they thinking? Do they really think such behavior will improve Kosovo's economy or bring Kosovo closer to membership in the European Union or get Kosovo recognized by other nations or membership in UNESCO or get EU visa liberalization I was sent here to help Kosovo become a firmer part of Europe, whole, free, and peace that is the foundation of U.S. policy on this continent. I never lose sight of that goal. To get there, the assembly has to function. It has to serve the people. The assembly is not a place for weapons, for destruction, for violence. If the current standoff continues, Kosovo's future in Europe is delayed at best. I wish President Gatiaga the best in her efforts to promote political dialogue and commend all parties in the assembly for taking part. I think it is a comfort on all those who care about Kosovo's future in Europe to make this argument, including those of you in the business community. Rule of law, regional security, economic development, and a functioning parliament. These are the keys to Kosovo's future. This country has come so far, and we cannot lose sight of our goal of a peaceful, prosperous, and independent Kosovo. I look forward to working with the AmCham and all of you over the next three years to build a better future for Kosovo and for all of its citizens and to realize those goals. Thank you very much. Father Nerchum, Vala.